So I need to prepare this object to be exported. And uh, the first thing that I need to know is uh, if it actually resembles the, the, the dimension that I actually want in my scene. And one thing you should be aware of is that Maya does a bad job transferring the uh, the scale of things. Sometimes you send it to Unreal and it would be like too tiny. And even among um, Autodesk software, like you send it to Mudbox and it would be too tiny and then you send something from Mudbox to Maya and it would be gigantic. It's, it's kind of really crazy and doesn't make any sense. Anyhow, so the first thing that uh, I want to do here is to go into the display, go to the grid option box and this is, I go to edit and reset. So this is the uh, the standard. So I want to explain briefly here, uh, by the way, if you want, you can change the colors uh, to kind of make it more fun whatsoever. But, um, and also like sometimes, like, or not sometimes, always, like you could change this, like let's say you can change like how many of these and then you wouldn't really see the, uh, the difference until you hit apply. So be aware of that because you could change it and you think like, oh, okay, I did it. And uh, you probably haven't until you hit apply. So you can change the colors here just to make it more fun if you like uh, for the uh, kind of the, the grid and whatsoever here. Uh, if you change the color, you can see it better. It's kind of cool. Cool pink. Okay. Uh, so um, you can make it black. It's kind of uh, nice to look at as well. Uh, so the uh, when it comes to these numbers, what are they? So I'm just going to go here all the way. Okay. And I'm going to make the uh, length and width. I want to make it maybe five. Enter and then hit apply. Okay, so five what? What is the unit that I'm looking at? right? Also, I'm going to make this to be only one subdivision per per unit. Hit apply. And then you have this grid, uh, grid line every five. So what I have right now is five units to be the full length, but it's not the full from here all the way here. It is the full length of the, the distance between this point and this point. I have five units. Now the second one is telling me that every five units there is one subdivision, meaning one, two, three, four, five. Here is one subdivision. Now if this was ten, then I should be having one subdivision, two subdivisions. So let's change this to ten and hit apply, there it is. Now I have five, 10. And now we come to the last part, which is how many subdivisions do I have uh, per unit? So um, I, have, um, I have one right now, if I go and increase it to five, hit apply, then I have one, two, three, four, five, I can count like each each unit, right? So um, now this one is telling me here that I have the maximum of 10 units. So now you can see that I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I am seeing all the 10 numbers throughout. And uh, you can see here that it's it's adding five subdivisions um, on every uh, on every block that is uh, you can see here like grid every uh, five so to make it less confusing than where this is headed I'll just make this to go one so length would be a maximum of one and then grid every one and then subdivision of one hit one hit okay and now this is what we have what we have right now is one unit and we have a grid every grid line every one unit 
So technically this is one to one. So technically we have just one and we should be seeing only one subdivision. You could say, if you want, you could say like, I want uh, three or five subdivisions for every unit, meaning for every centimeter or millimeter or meter that we have here, I would like to have five subdivisions and hit apply. And now we have five of them. Okay. So with that said, let's say I would like to have um, grid line every five units. So I should be having less of these. So grid line every five and hit apply. So we only get to see like one every five and then that also drives the number of subdivisions. Uh, so let's just go let, let's try to kind of explain it also in a different way if uh, by any chance this is confusing. I'm going to go to 50. Hit apply. Okay. And I want to have only one subdivision every time we have one unit. Hit apply. And I want to have only one grid line every unit. Hit apply. So now you can tell that I have 50 subdivisions here because it shows me one grid line every single unit. And I have a maximum of 50 as we can tell from here. So technically from this area to this area I have 100. And uh, I have uh, only one subdivision per unit. I could say show me uh, show me for instance uh, 10 subdivisions per unit and that's going to make this a lot more dense on the other hand i'm going to make this one on the other hand i could say i don't want this to be super dense i just want you to show me one grid line every 10 subdivisions or 10 units passing so one zero, hit OK and hit apply. OK, so uh, now the description here should be self-explanatory for you. I know this is boring. This is long and whatsoever, but uh, it's, it's very important. And of course, lastly, just to want to just want to make sure that you know exactly you have control over the units. How do we actually get to the units? Like, How do we change the units? Uh, you would go into the uh, button here that gives you the uh, settings. Uh, I have taken it out just to kind of have more space for me. So I think I believe it would be somewhere here and then that would be Windows, Settings and Preferences and then go into Preferences and here I can go into the Settings and then you can see here it's centimeters. So talking about centimeters now I have here from here to here I have 50 centimeters and only every 10 centimeters I have one grid line and in every in every grid line I get to see only one subdivision so I could make show me five subdivisions in every uh, uh, 10 centimeters and hit apply that would show you more Okay, so that's about the scale. Now let's talk about the asset. I'm going to, uh, I think there are, there is a, s a certain setup for like Unreal. Um, I, th I think I could be wrong, but that would be like 10, or I I'll just keep it to one, then 100, and then I think one, 10,000. Hit okay, hit apply. So I think something like that. I could be wrong, of course, but uh, anyhow. So I have this asset now, uh, moving on to the next step of preparing this asset uh, to be uh, at the perfect setup for, uh, for it to be exported. So I'll take the object and what I, what I want to do is to think about where would be the pivot point ideal. Um, 
not in terms of like how it comes to the engine or to uh, to the setup or the the environment but in terms of like what would be convenient for duplication so in my opinion here would be this corner or this corner could be the ideal setup it might be uh, not ideal to go with this one because they might be connecting differently to the other poles especially if there are like ladders and whatsoever it's more solid to go with this corner so hit D click and hold V and then here and just as an example if I were to uh, duplicate this control D and then hit V click and hold V and then move this to snap so now you can see it's kind of really easy to duplicate that so now that I moved the pivot point to the uh, to the place where it is so the first thing you start with is the pivot point the second thing is you click and hold X and then you snap that on the origin of the grid which is here so I move this away oops there you go so zooming out is important and this also shows you that um, it might be helpful to go into the uh, display and then change the colors so you could change the uh, the colors of the axes for instance to be different making them black would be actually really good so they are black now that should be like easier to see I suppose to this or this it's very difficult to see it now uh, I wouldn't go with with them being too colorful sometimes it's kind of annoying maybe this color is kind of peaceful but it's kind of annoying with the wireframe that's a different story anyhow I'll just go with uh, blue or uh, I actually like red with the black background or the blue background you could probably make the axes instead red and then make this to be gray okay so uh, now that I have determined where the pivot point is hit click and hold V and then snap to uh, not V sorry X because now I'm snapping to grid and here it is on the grid and snapped perfectly so the first step is determining the pivot point second point is snapping it on the origin of the grid because once it's imported to the engine or whatever uh, setup that someone is working on the environment they need to to know exactly where it's going to be and they expect it to be on the zero origin of the grid and the step after that would be modify freeze transformation so it would be sorry I sometimes hit reset modify freeze transformation so this way uh, they would know that this is the zero in case anyone like accidentally scaled it or rotated it or moved it you can just go here to the translate hit zero you can go to the rotate zero and then you can go to the scale and hit one so you would know it would be exactly where it should be now that it's all good you want to make sure it's named properly and then you go into file and then export selection and then you want to make sure that it's whether FBX or OBJ um, either way it sort of like works but just keep in mind that if you're going with FBX there are some preferences for the people who are working in the game engine so they, they could ask you for instance just make sure that it has the animation on it if it does have animation or if it has some uh, other features uh, like groups or naming or whatsoever uh, there could be some of them here as well so that's that's an area that you wanna kind of uh, check with uh, the person using your assets alright so uh, with that said you will uh, you will be taking all of the assets this is just kind of usually people uh, assemble the uh, modular design pieces after everything is all set or maybe before uh, this is already like I, I set these things up um, properly but um, I changed them just for the sake of like 
being able to go through this whole demo and all this. Um, so anyhow, I hope this is helpful. So for the step after this, I'm going to be taking these pieces and putting them together. What I would like to do uh, in theory is to, to do the same method uh, applied both on uh, Unreal Engine and Maya. Uh, but uh, since I, I cannot have that much time, then I'm probably just go, going to go with one. But it's pretty much the same concept uh, that would be applied. Uh, there could be some technical differences between like what you would have to prepare in Unreal versus what you would have to be prepared for in Maya. Usually in Maya there's nothing really, uh, but in, Ma in in Unreal you need to be, you know, prepare like a library and stuff like that. And uh, it, it could be some technical things, but uh, either way I'm only going to show you the process of assembling the pieces. And uh, there would be no need for my crunchy annoying voice. So I'm just going to put it with some relaxing music and see what's going to happen.